What's up, math friends of mine? My name is Robert Adu. Today, we'll be solving two-step inequalities. You heard that correct. Just recently, I was able to climb to the top of Mount San Jacinto in beautiful, sunny Palm Springs, California. You need a lot of water for a hike like that. In fact, most doctors recommend a lot of water every day for all of us for general health. So suppose I have a favorite water bottle and I wanna know how many times I need to fill this in order to have a, let's say, healthy life, okay? And suppose I've already had some water earlier today. We could actually create inequality problems to figure out how much water I need to consume in order to meet my optimal health. So let's be healthy together at the board. Mount San Jacinto, drop. Okay, there it is, check it out. We have a favorite water bottle of mine that holds 22 ounces. And my recommended amount of water, let's say based on certain things like the amount of activity for the day or how much I weigh or things like that, is 126 ounces. And suppose I drank 16 ounces already this morning. The question becomes, how many of these water bottles would I need to drink or fill basically? How many of those? How many of those? That's what I wanted. There you go in order to meet my goal of 126. So what's cool about this is that we can construct this problem kind of like in pieces, right? So let's start with this statement. I drank 16 ounces already this morning. So we could say 16 ounces. And now I'm gonna be drinking more. So 16 ounces plus, right? And if I need to drink 126 ounces, or more, right? The doctors wouldn't say, stop at 126. <laughs> they would say, have 126 or more, right? Think of it that way. So you could think of it as at least 126 or 126 or more, and that would be greater than or equal to. See that? So now we need to know how many of these water bottles that I need to drink, right? So let's let X represent, right, the number of fills. Is it true that each fill provides, boom, 22 ounces? So that would be 22 times the number of fills. You could even see it there. If I fill it one time, it'll be 22 ounces. If I fill it two times, that'll be 44 ounces. Plus 16 appears like it's not enough to reach 126. This is what I'm saying. I think you should really feel out the problem. That, that's why I, I sort of run through if X was one, if X was two, if X was three, and then you could see how many ounces we'd be getting. Now let's solve mathematically. Algebraically, what can we do to isolate x? We can subtract 16 on both sides, right? To isolate that variable. Gaon. All right, what do we got? 22x is greater than or equal to 126 minus 16 appears to be 110. All right. So 22 times what becomes 110? Let's go ahead and do inverse operations. The opposite of times 22 is divide 22 on both sides. All right, 22 divided by itself is one, gone. And now, you know what? I have a feeling about what this is, but uh, here for you. So let's go ahead and divide 110 using the calculator divided by 22, five. All right, so the number of fills, X, has to be greater than or equal to five water bottle fills, and then we will please the doctors. Good news, we can use this liquidation problem later. So I'm going to grab it. All right, come with me. All right, we'll see you later. Copy, all right? Now it's your turn, give it a try, friends. All right, this is a problem about Nico's principle, all right? Give that a try. trying to get my 126 ounces. 
I'm getting close. All right. You'll notice that we're going to revisit the problem. See, it's blank here. I said that we're going to copy it for a reason. And now the next step for us in our hydration situation is to graph the solution set on a number line, which is really cool because math isn't always just numbers. It's also pictures. Check it. Bring it back. Paste. Whoa, really big. All right, come on down. Been known to write very large. Okay, so there is our inequality that represented the number of bottle fills has to be five or more, greater than or equal to five fills of the bottle. How would this be graphed visually? Well, let's do it together, okay? So you'll notice that the number five is important. So we find positive five here, one, two, three, four, five here, and we start. You'll notice it also says greater than or equal to five. So that means the number of fills, or x, can actually be five. So I'm going to fill that five in. The reason that matters is that had the problem said x is greater than five, had it said this, suppose just for a second, take that off for a second, we wouldn't put a closed circle there. What we would do instead is we would do an open circle meaning x is not allowed to be 5, right? So we sometimes call that non-inclusive of 5. So you'll notice 5 is not included because x is not actually allowed to be 5, okay? So if it's ever greater than or less than just, it would be an open circle. If it's greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, closed circle, okay? Keep that in mind. Now we have to decide, well, if x can be greater than or equal to 5, what numbers can you think of that are greater than or equal to 5? Well, I'm thinking 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, getting larger. So we would just simply extend this line to the right, okay? So this is the number line that represents this inequality, all right? This number line set, right? Whereas if it was just greater than, it would be open circle going to the right. It would look like that if it was x is greater than 5. If it was that, okay? It would look like that. All right, so take that off. Give you a chance to do one. All right, friends? Let's go onward. Boom. Here's an inequality. Notice whether it's greater than or greater than or equal to. Graph the solution set once you solve on the number line. Give that a try. 